As we get as we get into this swing here, you know, you can see he gets a nice load into his rear leg, right, and into his rear hip. I, I like the fact that everything's kind of moving together when he loads, meaning his front knee kind of comes down and in, and then his hands start to kind of load back at the same time. His front shoulder's obviously down and in. A lot of Mike Trout kind of in, you know, he doesn't have a high leg kick, but a lot of Trout in this swing when he when he gets after it. So when we get him to the launch position here, again, heel plant, we're going to see that back knee come in. And this is a big dude, right? A big, strong guy, and he's creating a ton of separation. It's somewhat hard to see here, but you can see his belt and his hips are facing this way. And his chest is still back here, probably behind his back foot. So he's got a ton of se separation. Top of the top hand at about his ear. Okay, knob facing back behind his back foot. A lot of people say face the catcher um, with that. Well, it depends where the catcher is. This guy here, I don't know who he plays for, but he's probably needs to be about two or three feet closer to the... <laughs> to the hitter um, he's pretty far back but that's okay we're not talking about him all right so again great launch position here so now as we continue through this swing, you see the back knee starting to come in his head's going to stabilize here you know usually a frame or two after contact okay so there's his head there okay you can see that head stays back you see how the head doesn't lift that's really, really good. So now we see this pitch coming in. I'm going to put a number on it. I don't know how level the camera is. So, you know, this isn't going to be an exact number, but it's probably plus or minus two degrees would be my guess. Let's see. Here comes that pitch. So it looks like a fastball. I'm getting four degrees on here. Okay. Um, so it's probably four to six degree or five degrees. It's probably five to seven degrees coming down. So my concern with him, now I have to redraw it. Give me one second here. Um, Boy, he stays connected well, though, doesn't he? He does. He has a very short, short move to the ball. Um, that's what it means. His his elbows, you know, are pretty tight on this pitch. I don't know how in it was, but you can see that bat slots right next to his shoulder. You know, kind of as he starts to rotate and the ball comes into the screen there. So let me redraw that line again. I just wanted to zoom in. So here's the middle of the ball and the middle of the ball. Okay, so let's see what we got here. About five degrees again. Let's watch where his barrel goes. So you can see right here, his barrel drops below that line. So the ball is at his front foot. So this tells me a lot of what he's going to do. Now, if he missed this pitch and didn't hit it well, then it would kind of tell me, uh, you know, Okay, maybe he just took a bad swing, but the fact that he barreled this means that he, you know, this is probably a pretty typical swing of his. But you can see his barrel drops below that line somewhat significantly. If it drops below that line an inch, that's usually good. Um, that will help get the ball in the air. If it drops more than that, then what happens is we have to make a correction. So if we look at his, his barrel path from here to the ball... You know, he's probably coming up, I don't know, you know, it's tough to tell, which, you know, from there to there, it's probably like, you know, close to 16, 15 degrees. And then it goes from here, it goes even steeper, which would be concerning to me. It goes to 26. So he's going from, you know, down there all the way to 26 in two frames. Okay, so it gets a little blurry in here. Now, the good part is, notice how perfect his, his timing was. See where all those lines intersect there okay that's exactly where he hits it okay he hits he hits the ball there and then the ball's off the bat there and now that ball is leaving so this is not high enough for a home run but the ball is leaving at you know 18 i guess if judge hit it or stanton with some kind of super 2020 covid baseballs they might go out of the park but 17 degrees that's you know that's that's a gapper um, if he hit it over the shortstop's head, it's probably a double. If he hit it out of an outfielder, it's just a single. But, you know, he definitely hit this ball pretty good on the barrel. But you can see that was his one spot. So what happens if our friend here is just a little bit early and he tries to hit the ball? And, and this pitch wasn't outside, right? You can tell by his elbows and how tight his elbows are. This pitch wasn't outside, and he let it get really deep. So what does that tell me? That tells me that he probably knows that when he lets the ball get deep, behind his front foot, he's really good, 
Okay. Now, what happens if he hits a ball out by his front toes? Well, I don't know if he normally extends or not. I have another video we're going to look at. We're going to see if we get any more right arm extension. But my concern would be this frame here where he drops a little bit under. And then this frame out in front where he's way over. So to me, if he doesn't hit the ball, if he doesn't have perfect timing, then and he hits the ball back here, he's going to pop it up. Meaning if he hits it like here, he's going to pop it up. Or if he hits it here, he's going to top it and ground it out. So that's my concern as a as a development coach or as a as a as a as a scout. If I was looking at this swing, I, I would have concerns with that. Okay, um, you know everything else looked good, but then so I have this concern, right? Here's my concern: he's got a four inch window where he's going to be successful, and then I look at his stats and I say, this dude is really successful. Is he really successful in four inches? If that's the case, his brain and his timing and his rhythm and his thought process is off the charts. Okay, so have, sorry, I just to cut in. Uh, is it have, does this have to do with bat? I'm looking. At, I'm I'm frozen at the frame of where he's just at the point of contact where it actually looks like he gets jammed. He doesn't. The, the, he actually gets barreled to the baseball. Mm -hmm. Is that a product though of bat lag, a really good bat lag? Because this is an inside pitch. Uh, no, it's not because if you look, if you take it back to, so you have the content, the frame where the ball's off the bat, where his, his barrels on the inside of his left thigh, and then you take it back one frame and then you take it back another frame. So you take it back two frames. If he had good bat lag, the knob of the bat would be even with his left elbow. Okay. Okay. And that barrel would be up higher. So he's actually releasing the barrel a little bit early to get it to the ball, which is what you would do on, on an outside pitch to get to it. But I don't think it was outside based on what his hands look like at contact and where the catcher's set up and the catcher's arm. The catcher's definitely not reaching across his body. So, so this is, you know, this could be good hitting, you know, and, and again, maybe this was, he had two strikes, right? Maybe he had two strikes. He was looking for a ball away. Guy throws it in. He alligator arms it and hits a ball to, to left field. But the, I've looked at a few of his swings, and this is very similar. Okay, This arm action where he doesn't really get his right arm extended yeah. is, is very common. He doesn't get to a full power V. Now, I have seen him get to that position in batting practice, which is a good sign, um, but not as much in, in game. So for me... This tells me he might get exposed with, you know, different speed pitches. Okay, so this is, you know, a little bit of a concern. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, you know, a side-by-side -side in here. And this is another swing from that same summer when he's on the Olympic team. Okay, and we'll take a look at this. So he has a blue jersey on now. Okay, so just zoom in here. And we'll take a look at this swing. Okay, so as he goes through, we're going to see the same load. We're going to see the same launch position. Okay, I mean, he's pretty darn consistent, <laughs> consistent here with his, his load and, and launch. So that's pretty awesome, right? That's always good to see. Let me just drive that down. Okay, then as he continues to come through, you can see that back comes down next to the shoulder. And he's just a little bit, he dumps the barrel for... for what I'm looking for in my taste, he dumps that barrel a little bit earlier. Most guys are still going to be about here in this position. When that bat's in the in the uh, approach position, when the barrel's, um, you know, parallel to the batter's box line, you know, the knob's facing the pitcher, the barrel's facing the catcher. In that position, typically you want to see that knob out in front more and that barrel a little bit higher than what he has. He's got a little bit more slope there, Okay. So this could mean this is more of a kind of a judge swing plane, I guess. That would be, you know, definitely, you know, if you have Yelich on one side and Judge on the other side, it definitely leans more towards that. I don't know if I, I would say Trout is going to be he's Trout keeps that barrel up a little bit more in this position for sure. Um, but as we continue here, you know, it's another barrel. This is a barrel to right center to me. It looks like this kid's going to be a right center field hitter. He has really good power to right center field because he lets the ball get deep, right? And if we bring this back, we're going to bring this pitch back again. Draw this, draw a similar line, okay? So I'm going to draw a similar line here through the ball from here to here. 
Is it the same? Draw same. The swing plane. Correct. The, uh, yeah, the pitch plane. So draw on the pitch plane. So this one's at roughly four degrees. So four or five. It's a, a, the exact same pitch he had before. But just notice how he lifts off of there. So that's my concern. Is he doesn't stay. I mean, you can see barrel, right? I mean, he. This is a perfect frame where he gets to the, the barrel, the barrel to the ball, right? But then one frame after, can he get to here? Like, what happens if he's six inches earlier? Does his barrel go to there? No. He's going to hit that ball off the end of the bat and hit a ground ball to the pull side. So he's definitely a guy. I mean, you could put him in a little bit more of a J.D. Martinez, although Martinez extends really well. Martinez would – Martinez kind of drops the barrel down like this, but Martinez will extend and control the barrel all the way to the front foot or beyond. Okay, so that's the difference. And see, his right arm looks exactly the same as it looks, you know, here on on the on the left side on the other swing. So these are very very similar swings. That would be, you know, my concern is he's going to hit a lot of ground balls to the pull side. Like he's going to hit a lot of toppers to the pull side if he doesn't let it get deep. Um, which also means he's not maximizing any barrel release and he's not maximizing, you know, his his swing plane because he could really be on plane probably from there to there on this swing if he used his hands and arms. Now, this is something that he's going to learn at the next level. This is a wood bat move. This is a whippy move. This is something that's going to take him a, you know, a year or two with a wood bat, and he will totally get it. So I, don't, I wouldn't really have any concern. I mean, unless he's not coachable or he, you know, he's, I, I don't see that happening, right? He's, he's a good kid from everything that I've read. So, you know, but that's where his, his strength will become is extending his happy zone, extending instead of having a four inch window to make contact, you know, he, he'll be able to hopefully double that, you know, so that he stays on plane and it all has to do really with his right hand. So that's what I see now. And then the reason he does that is because he drops his barrel here underneath a little bit. If so, if he extended from this position, um, you know, when his when the ball, so you know, Jim, when the ball's out in front of his front foot, he hasn't hit it yet. And his barrel's back by his back ankle. So from this position, you know, what guys usually do is they'll their barrel will drop, and then it's like, oh crud, I gotta get it back up. And so they're gonna kind of come this way back up to the ball. Yeah, he actually cuts that off a little bit soon, but that's that's the problem. Usually, you don't want your barrel. Most most really great big leaguers that have success, their barrel comes down, and it doesn't really level off until about here, the inside of their their left knee. Then it'll yeah. start to kind of work up that way through the ball. So you can see he drops it earlier, and then he comes back up sooner. All right, so I don't know if that's what his, he's been taught or that's what he does, but that would be the change. That would be the adjustment to really make him better. So if I was grading a swing like this and I didn't know who he was, hey, Jake, here's a swing. Can you evaluate this for it? There's, there's definite risk in, the, in these two swings. There's risk. But when you take that risk and you say, here's a guy that barrels everything, Here's a guy that hit 350 in the pack. Well, well let's see what his pack. I don't know if you can pull that up, but if you if you find out what his 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 conference numbers are, pack 12 pitching versus you know playing um, you know some other schools midweek, that's much different. So you know, did he hit 300 in the in the pack 12? That would that would be like okay, this dude barrels balls. He's a quality hitter, and he has an issue. So when you take that information and you couple it. To me, I'm like, I want this guy. I don't know if I take him 1-1, but I want this guy because I know I can make him even better than he already is. He has intangibles. He has vision. He has good rhythm. He's a gamer. Now, all of a sudden, and I see some flaws. I see some room for growth in his swing. That's exciting as a development guy. That's exciting for me. Um, if I'm cutting a check for $8 million to sign this guy... I have concerns and I hope I have trust in my development staff to really bring out the best in this kid that we just drafted. Yeah. Also, just for another visual for everybody, when you were talking about the barrel dump and where the barrel needed to be to get coming down uh, and getting on plane inside that back right knee, the one uh, cue that I've heard you say before to a young hitter on one of your videos on, on your Facebook page was 
pretend that that barrel is slicing your trap in half and that keeps kind of gives you a better visual and a cue to keep it close and stay connected and to get on plane on time which is something that it doesn't seem like he does um, because of that barrel dump correct yeah he doesn't yeah um and that's it's not bad like he keeps that barrel you know when he first goes to rotate this is what i look at here see how close the bat is to his head so his first move is pretty good you know that bat stays right next to his head he doesn't use his left arm as, as much as, you know, some some other players. You know, if you look at uh, Buster Posey, I'm trying to think of a guy, a big bigger guy with, you know, build or even, even judge sometimes before his barrel kind of dumps. But they'll get to this position here, and by using their left arm more, their bat will be here uh, over the shoulder. Okay, so if I bring him one more, their hand will be here. And that's using the left arm more, um, which is... You know, he's a right-hand dominant guy. He uses his right hand more. Using your right hand is fantastic, especially out in front with wood to release that barrel. But using the right hand early in the swing typically isn't a great move unless you're trying to do it to keep the barrel up, to keep the barrel more vertical. You know, you see a lot of guys do top hand drills. But um, if you use your top hand you early... Are you pushy at that point when you're using too much of the right hand? Um, sometimes. I, I don't have a problem with a push. I see, I see a lot of big leaguers kind of push through all the time um, and again the push through happens right at contact so you extend the right arm and push your right arm and release the barrel through so that you stay on plane so he actually needs some push from the contact position where his right elbow is kind of stuck to his his uh his hip or his ribs there he needs yeah. to push and separate get some arm separation that will help him stay on plane so um, yeah, I mean, he could use, he definitely could shorten everything up and, and get rid of that little bit of a barrel dump, but you know what, to each his own. I mean, if he's, if these baseballs that, you know, we're hitting this year, they're hard. I mean, they gotta be a little bit harder because I'm seeing exit velocities that are higher, um, than I ever have before on balls that are hit higher than I've ever seen before. Um, then you know what? There's nothing wrong with Aaron Judge. He's got like six home runs already, right? I mean, this is a big, strong guy. You put him in Detroit. I don't know what right center in Detroit is. It's probably not nothing like right center in Yankee Stadium, which is a really short porch. Um, you know, let him do that. That's his game. And then, you know what? He can cheat middle in once in a while once the pitchers make adjustment, and he's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with a guy that can hit in the big leagues and hit 280 with 35 home runs or 265 with 35 home runs. There's no problem with that. Um, but if you're trying to maximize this guy's potential – and he has that kind of hitting ability, I think he could probably hit, you know, 315 and hit 30 home runs if he has that ability and the right swing. Yeah. A couple of notes here. I'm looking at his uh, his page on Arizona State's uh, sports 